prophet Isaiah. Uh, uh, chapter the 57. Verse 14. And it shall be said, cast up, cast up. Prepare the way, take up the stumbling blocks out of the way of my people. For thus set the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, and whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, and with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit would fail before me, and the souls uh, which I have made, for the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hit me and was wroth, and he went on backslidingly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, and will heal him, and I will lead him, and will restore comforts unto him, and to those of his that mourn. I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace to him that is afar off, and to him that is nigh, saith Jehovah, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, which cannot rest, and whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Cry aloud, despair not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and declare unto my people their transgression, and to the house of Jacob their, their, their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that doeth righteousness, and hath not forsaken the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of righteousness. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, and thou seest not? Have afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find what pleaseth you, and exact all your labours. Behold, ye have fasted for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye do not at present fast to cause your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul, that he should bow down um, his head as a bulrush, and spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Would thou call this a fast, and a day acceptable to Jehovah? Is not this the fast which I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the thongs of the of yoke, and to send forth free the crushed, and that he break every yoke? Is it not to deal with uh, thy bread to the hungry, <laughs> and that thou bringest to thy house the needy wanderers, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the dawn, and thy health shall bring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of Jehovah shall be thy rear guard. Then shalt thou call, and Jehovah will answer. Thou shalt cry, and he will say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the unjust speech, and thou proffer thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in the darkness, and thine obscurity be as midday, and Jehovah will guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and strengthen thy bones. And thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a water spring whose waters deceive not. And they that come of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations that have remained from generation to generation, and thou shalt be called repairer of the breaches, restorer of frequented paths. If thou turn thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of Jehovah honorable and their honor him thou honor him not doing thine own ways nor finding thine own pleasure nor speaking idle words then shalt thou delight thyself in Jehovah and I will cause thee to ride on the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father for the mouth of Jehovah hath spoken 
I need scarcely say, dear brethren, that uh, uh, Isaiah prophesies uh, uh, not only in relation to Christ, uh, but to uh, a, a restored Israel. Rejoicing is in the one uh, who was once afflicted of God for them. But then while uh, divine patience waits for that day, yeah, For a day with God is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Divine power would anticipate that day. We cannot think of uh, God presenting Christ in the majesty divine that is he is on that throne in Isaiah 6 his glory in the house all his glory on the cross in humiliation shall his exaltation and humiliation be wide assured a the, the exaltation and glory, the humiliation and grace, uh, and such glory and grace. Shall it be said uh, that God must wait for the crowning of his dispensational ways uh, to have in an earthly people uh, um, that limited response to Christ, uh, which is due to him, of course, in an unlimited way, uh, but it comes from an earthly people uh, not indwelt by the Holy Spirit though the Spirit of the Lord will come upon them. Shall not God in the power of the Spirit have now an answer greater than that for which he waits uh, while patience will wait for our answer Love must have uh, a heavenly answer, and that in the assembly. And you notice that the Spirit goes on glowingly uh, through the sacred uh, writer, the sacred pen, shall I say, <laughs> of the prophetic writer, uh, to uh, Zion and Jerusalem with great feeling. And why I've read these scriptures is... <coughs> That while uh, Zion, representing to us the assembly abstractly, uh, in, uh, in, in spiritual vision, and Jerusalem, the assembly concretely, uh, in our practical, uh, responsible uh, history, um, and its history here on earth, uh, worked out in localities, uh, that these chapters treat of the kind of personnel uh, that will inhabit Zion uh, in that coming age of glory and surely to a greater extent in the features of Christ he who humbled himself unto death the personnel of the assembly I uh, <coughs> allude to the 57th chapter and I link it on just by way of analogy with Peter's epistles. You will remember <coughs> that uh, the thought of humility uh, is so attractive <coughs> that the one who habits eternity and whose name is holy, <coughs> he must dwell in the high and holy place. He dwells there but uh, with it, with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit. 
not with those, with him. It's a personal matter. And uh, we had this afternoon, uh, uh, all humility, <laughs> that note of Paul, in his first words <coughs> to the Ephesian elders, as he came in with the wondrous light of, light of gold, less than the least of all saints. And for that utterance of his in Ephesians, it's linked up with the working of the mystery, the working out of the mystery. That is the, the great truth of the uh, head in glory and the body here. <laughs> and uh, Paul, uh, so intelligent in that regard of the mystery, and in a becoming humility uh, that so befits a vessel of divine light as taking character from him who stoops so low even to the cross, death and the grave uh, to bring us uh, uh, the light uh, uh, of God <coughs> and all his glorious thoughts <coughs> regarding Christ and the assembly <coughs> and then at the end uh, as we saw this afternoon he is kneeling uh, <coughs> the first represents his attitude uh, 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 of lowly grace towards the brethren so great that he was called to serve Anyone serving in the spirit of Christ or of Jesus would be as one who went on down on his knees to serve the brethren. Solomon uh, thought nothing of his glory. He thought of the greatness and glory of the persons he was called to serve. So great a people. And so he sought God for them and brought God to them. There's no other way, of course. The, the, he who is with God about the saints will not fail to bring God to the saints. That is seen in its wondrous glory in Christ himself. As in every servant of his who has followed uh, uh, in love's path love's way of surpassing excellence traced in the holy footsteps of Jesus. Yeah. But uh, as I say at the end uh, he is kneeling his lowly attitude Godward what a model he affords uh, in a priestly way as his lowly attitude uh, manward as a Levite appearing uh, for the, from the first day as he says it was just, <coughs> there was there were no preliminaries the first day there was a breakthrough you may see in the ardent love of the apostle uh, that uh, these secrets uh, uh, over which uh, divine persons had been engaged in eternity uh, should now be disclosed. Mm. What a moment for God. I, I, I'm now referring to the three persons, the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Mm. What a moment eh, for the disciplined eh, vessel mature eh, in lowly serving love who coming uh, from the upper parts appeared at, at Ephesus with secrets hidden from eternity trusted to a trustworthy vessel ministered to, not in the eloquence of human wisdom but in the grace and dignity of the holy anointing oil so that uh, Peter as I was seeing, he, he strikes the note of lowliness, I think, in relation to the kingdom position. And you'll remember in chapter 5 of First Peter, 
this one self-confident man uh, uh, who had uh, uh, two halves in divine government uh, and yet uh, grace divine behind it the fall that always accompanies the proud. If, uh, so that he speaks now in chapter 5 of First Peter, and he says uh, in verse 5, Likewise, ye younger. Think of it, ye younger. The lambs, I suppose, uh, that the Lord had uh, uh, entrusted to him. Be subject to the elder. Acknowledge ripened experience with God in spiritual ways. What a learner you'll be, young people. As was that lad of fifteen. That was his age when his grandfather died. I refer to Jacob. His grandfather Abraham died. Oh, <coughs> he learned a lot uh, up to fifteen. Abraham, his grandfather, is said to have dwelt, they dwelt in tents with Isaac and his dad Jacob. As he saw, ran off to spot <coughs> on a sunny day, you know. Now glad we are to see the young in the sunshine of divine love here. We're not belittling, belittling the creator's sunshine, but the redeemer's sunshine is not in the power of his hand exactly. It's what radiates from his countenance. You have first acquaintance in love uh, uh, with the Redeemer's such high. Uh, mighty works of power indeed for which we bless God uh, in the benign sunshine uh, to God's creatures impartially assured righteous and, and unrighteous. Such is God. But uh, um, how, how good to be in the sunshine here, as men are groping into gro gro groping into increasing darkness, um, till they are at last finally reach eternal darkness. If unrepentance, how beautiful uh, uh, the way of the justice is the shining light, shining more and more unto the perfect day. And so Peter uh, refers to this matter, bind on humility towards one another. <laughs> That's a very uh, uh, stately garment. It has come from heaven in Jesus. <laughs> Who's so well dressed? According to the fashions of heaven. For he who humbled himself to death uh, uh, has been exalted to glory. Uh, that's God's answer uh, to the uh, way Jesus humbled himself. For God sets himself against the proud, but to the humble gives grace. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, having cast all your care upon him, for he cares about you. <laughs> well, uh, you haven't to uh, assert your rights. He cares about you. <laughs> Leave yourself in his hand. Pride takes you out of his hands. Puts you in the enemy's hands. <laughs> Humbleness keeps you uh, in grace where alone you're safe. Um, and God helps you under his mighty hand of discipline so that you come up uh, as suited assembly material uh, um, to uh, embellish uh, in the grace of Christ for where else is that true adornment embellish that great enhance that great vessel the most august that heaven or earth will ever know. 
fill out your niche there in the humility that grace teaches at the hands of our most blessed of teachers who is the embodiment of the lowly grace which he would impart to us So that God is here seen uh, uh, <clears throat> delighting uh, in this contrite and humble spirit. You say Isaiah travels fast. He does. He's good cause to. He's in great haste to come to the king in chapter 6. Um, in chapter 53, of course, he comes a uh, to the still greater glory, I suppose, in a certain sense of the cross, um, as bearing in its import upon us. Not that I'm belittling, of course, for the person of the throne, commanding a, a worship in chapter 6, is Jesus of the cross. In chapter 53, I'm not for a moment uh, making less of one or the other. Uh, they're both infinite. But what I mean is um, that the coming to the sufferings of Christ uh, involved a long chapter in Isaiah's ministry, uh, involving, I think, some sort of uh, formation in a generation humble and hidden, to whom the Spirit of God, through the prophet, constantly reverts in the darkest hour of... Uh, the nation's pride. You may wonder how quickly he turns aside um, from the denunciation of the proud to his glory in the humble. That is at hand under his eye. And he finds a comfort for his heart. Relief, shall I say, uh, uh, in regard of his spirit as the Lord Jesus did with the disciples, saying to them, Ye are they that have continued with me in my temptation. And so uh, uh, we have this beautiful spirit. you notice idolatrously that in verse 9 of chapter 57, they go to the king with ointment, and it's multiplied our perfume. The contrast of that is this lowly spirit. The incense was beaten small. It was grateful to the nostrils of gold. It speaks of Jesus uh, in his loneliness, ministered uh, uh, appreciatively uh, by the worshippers of God. Uh, and wh whom are grateful to God? Wonderful answer to the idolatry of the world today that would offer perfumes, anointments to the great of this world. When he who alone is to receive all praise is out of men's minds. <coughs> and now, uh, as I see, you have this great matter. Uh, 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 of good uh, now operating uh, in spite of the heartlessness of mere externals he denunciates uh, the bowed head as a bulrush or the uh, uh, platitudes religious of the dead letter or the attitude the what are called the genuflections you know that mark uh, current religion uh, of about me uh, uh, bowed head in the letter uh, proud neck in the spirit of things and God will have none of it and he can denunciate it because he's got what's fragrant to his spirit and uh, grateful to his heart. 
You notice there's no denunciation of Laodicea in its awfulness, which answers to this character of things here. Um, Till the Lord has got Philadelphia. That is, the worst is exposed when the best is brought to light. God never denunciates, I think, what is foreign to him to the fool. As in the cross, in judgment, till he had what was grateful to him. In that little company he drew to Christ, and, to, and who clung to Christ, come what may. Um, and so to he, he, he God's indignation against evil, he voices, but uh, in the presence of his appreciation of what he had for himself. The Lord could expose the proud Pharisee in Luke 7, because he had the loving heart uh, uh, that had hair long enough uh, to use it to... to make everything of Christ with precious privilege of our sisters. Uh, which I'm sure they increasingly cherish in relation to long hair uh, and the love that would use it testimonially <laughs> to disclose such to be uh, <laughs> public lovers of Christ In a very scene when uh, uh, Simon treats him with disdain. But now we, uh, you notice what we have here. How oh, God dwells over this spirit, spirit of Jesus. How we fed upon it in Jesus. Meek and lowly in heart, he. Millions of qualities mark him, of course. Everything lovely in man, God would them. And in that sense, man would too, for, for those who are of his generation. But the Lord selects two qualities, the most needed, no doubt. Mm. Uh, in this hour, when I say the most needed, uh, I shouldn't say that because they're all needed, but he stresses two. And we all understand uh, the necessity of them uh, in our own history. I'm meek and lowly in heart, he says, and ye shall find rest for your soul. That's the personnel in view of the assembly. And I think chapter 57 can prophetically be viewed in that light. <clears throat> the contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble. Oh, what is this great church revival without humility? Laodicea, pre- Laodicea and pretension. Uh, will utilize it uh, and does if allowed <laughs> lowliness uh, can take advantage of the revival of Christ the lowly one uh, as the power of all divine revival Israel will live by Christ the nations will live by Christ the lowly today live by Christ. As of the assembly, God. And so God goes on to see that uh, um, he, uh, this spirit so uh, grateful to him that he makes his home in such hearts. Think, think of what that means to him. To have a home in lowly hearts the cathedrals profess to give him uh, an entry which he disdains. The lowly heart invites him, and one may say in all reverence, God cannot resist the spirit of Jesus in lowly hearts. He confided himself unreservedly to that spirit in Jesus, and he finds an open door into hearts today. Uh, a kin in spirit to Jesus, Oh, may we not fail him. Uh, For uh, uh, it says that uh, he he delights in the humble, we know too. He says that uh, the proud, uh, 
He looks upon us far off. The hungry, he, he, he will fill with good things. He, he, and I think... Great mass of uh, unjudged flesh. How quickly it grows. How formidable it appears. Prophetic words. Take up the stumbling blocks out of the way of my people. First Corinthians. Prophetic ministry. Think of the stumbling blocks there. <laughs> but my people, God is faithful. Wouldn't give them up, nor would Paul. And so one stumbling block. Each of them centering in the big eye. In some form, Allah. Is, is faced in the light of the cross and named. Um, severally oh we say we're all poor wretched things you know <laughs> that's far too vague and general <laughs> for exercise souls the 51st of uh, psalm treats um, in detail <clears throat> in ever growing depths of feeling and anguish in repentance over the sinful cast of the writer of that psalm Dear brethren, let us call stumbling blocks by their only name. Don't let us call them difficulties. <laughs> that is uh, a, a uh, pleasing religious kind of label <laughs> for these stumbling blocks. If you go to travel, you know, you don't uh, give any name to stumbling blocks. <laughs> But the only name that belongs to them. And we're, going to, we're traveling, dear brethren. Uh, we can humbly see that. Uh, and keeping stiff in it. But there are the persons who, uh, uh, who claim to have difficulties. But they're the difficulty. Dreadful thing to be a stumbling block. God pronounces judgment, or the law does, on those who are a snare to the saints. Uh, stumbling blocks out of the way of my people. What feelings God has uh, that they shouldn't be prevented uh, from going uh, his way. And then he, he refers later on. I won't detain you over this chapter 57 because I want to get on to the next. Uh, but uh, God's having his way now. Uh, <laughs> He says, I have seen his ways. Um, well, you see, <laughs> the, the prophet is in such haste, he is. You, someone says, why doesn't he explain to us? He's suddenly turning round the corner, you might say. <laughs> you need to be very alert, you know. I saw a slogan uh, uh, the, a little time ago uh, in regard to traffic warnings. Uh, and it said... Uh, if you want to be alive tomorrow, be alert today. Well, of course, that's a, a, a right warning, no doubt. But what, to move, what value it has amongst us, surely? That the alert live and the inner die. As we sometimes used to sing in the old hymn book, we're all in death supinely sleep. An aim to live and are dead, the inner die. Protestantism is dying in that way. And Rome is taking full advantage uh, in, 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 uh, in her darkest eyes over the utter weakness of perishing Protestantism. Thank God there is something else. And we surely crave humbly to have part in it. Uh, <clears throat> in all that is living as having to do with the living God and the service of the living God and being among the sons of the living God what a living character of things but now I have seen his ways and will heal him very beautiful Peter recovered uh, I've seen his ways he wept bitterly the Lord appeared to him and healed him and uh, he said by his stripes we are healed 
He knows what healing is, does Peter. Kingdom healing to provide you uh, with a church constitution. For he goes on to our beloved brother Paul. Uh, more attention to uh, Peter's healing grace would find us more efficient and available uh, in the great vessel of glory, the assembly uh, 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 and the poor. I will lead them and will restore comforts unto him. The Lord just did that, you know. Peter says, <coughs> and to those of, of his that mourn, I do it, these wonderful eyes uh, are the salvation of the situation. When poor Israel lay in bondage, God comes in with seven glorious eyes. And where is Pharaoh? And all his host. So that we fall back on the sovereignty of the, of the I will. Uh, it's not the divine will as presented simply. It is I. It is divine persons entering into this glorious church revival. According to the economy in Matthew, the great church gospel, in which they place themselves at the beginning and are asserting thy right, their rights in love and glory and grace at the end. Uh, so that uh, the end of a thing is greater than the beginning. Not in uh, quantity, we're not belittling the fact that the pristine glory of the assembly will never return in its efficient character but the little strength uh, of a broken day uh, has an excellency all its own as the fruit of divine, reviving handiwork. Uh, that has a glory uh, 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 to divine love peculiar to itself. Well, no, we, <clears throat> uh, the wicked are put in contrast to all this, but now we have this... Uh, great matter before us uh, uh, God's disdain of the externals light in the letter with no feelings how much God makes of the soul in this chapter doesn't he uh, as we shall see but no God says you, you're having your fast. You're keeping up your calendar. Uh, it might be with us formal attention to meetings uh, in great regularity of the letter. But without the uh, uh, leaning on uh, the breast of Jesus in love which will alone give us strength. Living and loving uh, in connection with each occasion. And now God says, you've chosen to make your fast, and Christendom is proud of its fasts. It builds up the religious men with them, while fasting in the divine thought is the flesh start. Still more, the surrender is of much that might be legitimate to have more power in a broken day in the testimony. Fasting's oft, says Paul. The great church gospel presents Jesus as fasting. Forty days in the wilderness. Why does that come in Matthew? If it isn't to show that the Pauline uh, truth as regards the assembly and seen it in fasting's oft is not the order of the day. The surrender of what may be perfectly legitimate uh, in the letter, but is foreign to the spirit of devotion to God's supreme interest on earth. Uh, the assembly still more to God's supreme object in heaven, Christ. We know it. God says this is the fast that I want. Uh, my feelings in the matter. Uh, what do you do now in, in, in a fast that pleases me? He says, um, you're letting the brethren free. Uh, you undo the thongs of the yoke. 
You see, you're not in the legality of the letter, but in the liberty and grace of the Spirit. To send forth free and crushed, and that ye break every yoke. Isaiah says the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. It's in the power of the Spirit that the yoke is broken. Brethren's ideas of all standing, uh, hey, becoming a sort of uh, uh, immobile shrine, worshipped at what we've always done uh, from time immemorial. Does that suit the living God? He's looking to see how many brethren we're freeing in the forgiving grace of the dispensation. And then, how many brethren were feeding? Notice the word here. There's your bread for the hungry. It's yours. Yes, you had it from Christ. The bread come down from heaven. And you're dispensing it. <laughs> you're at home in the bread you're feeding your brethren with. It's substance. <laughs> it isn't husks. Dry bread. Fruit of exercise. You're nourished in it. And I'm sure you can bend that bread. <laughs> the grace uh, of your master, young people, <laughs> as you feed upon him. For the bread is really the grace of heaven here in Jesus. And in thy house, think of your house, who for? Your friends, the needy, wanderers, the winds and strays, if you will. You understand how the Lord took to his heart uh, the needy? No house for special friendships. A dark hole, oh, dark place that. But uh, Gaius, the host of the church, took to his heart the needy, and there were plenty of them uh, at Corinth. Impartial would he be in it. And then uh, you cover the naked, and you do not hide yourself from your own flesh. Oh, you say that's doing something for your relatives? Well, uh, here, of course, your own flesh would be your spiritual relatives. I don't mean you're to ignore the care of your own flesh uh, in the sense of materially. Um, but here we have, uh, you don't hide yourself, you know. You don't uh, uh, evade uh, the obligations. Uh, in your own flesh, the Lord says you've done it for my brethren. The least of them, then you've done it unto me. And so Peter puts you, uh, as has often been said, uh, on the rails for Paul's train. Uh, he, he puts you on the highway, uh, divine, you may see, uh, uh, with its great landmarks of mercy, that you may not uh, wander out of the uh, divine highway, traced out in the steps of Jesus, following in his steps, as uh, Peter says. And then Paul gives you the power... Uh, to travel along that highway and in princely dignity uh, and uh, holy haste, shall we say, uh, even to the terminal divine of that highway which is God himself. Um, in adoring praise, uh, as we have it in the last verse of the third chapter of Ephesians. But now, dear brethren, uh, then shall thy light break forth you see, if you do certain things, then there's a result. Verse 13, if thou turn back thy foot, and so on, and, and then shalt thou delight. The ifs and thens are, are beautiful. The if gives us the opportunity. <laughs> the invitation, the then finds us uh, uh, equal to it. The very God who makes the proposal... Uh, the if his mind is closed furnishes in the spirit the power for the then and when is the then by and by never uh, the ifs and then are very close together uh, in this prophecy <laughs> for the good is moving quickly um, and it's a, if the time is brief we must get into line quickly and now what does God see thy righteousness think of it thy light oh you say I wish I could follow Ephesians. How about laying yourself out in devotion for the hungry, the needy, the naked, 
Uh, and not hiding yourself from your own flesh. Young people, it is on the line of simple devotion uh, to poor afflicted saints that you're going to develop these hands, says Paul, in the highest Ephesian realms of his ministry, he refers to it, linking on by the side of loving, devoted care for the saints uh, in a material way, maybe, in a thousand ways known to love alone. Comforting young people, taking a little of love's care to some bedridden sister, maybe. You're on that line. And God says, then, go on, go on, march the door. And then, then shall thy light break forth as the dawn. I'll see to this, the flooding of your soul with my richest thoughts of Christ and the assembly. I can entrust that to a devoted heart that links itself up sufferingly and sympathetically with my suffering people. I'll keep nothing back uh, from hearts that identify themselves. Young people, are you doing it? Will God suffering despise people? Oh, you see, I'm waiting to come into fellowship till I've got more light. Link on in love uh, uh, with the lovers of Christ, with the little light you have, and God will add to you uh, in the company, as he would never do for you individually, alone. For we get light together, and thy help shall spring forth speedily. Very fine. No delays. None of the inert delays uh, of the human religious calendar. Uh, Everything in the strikeliness, energy of life, prospering, uh, taking many years, no. Thy help shall bring spring forth speedily. And one loves, dear brethren, uh, to be allowed to visit this continent and other parts of the earth, uh, um, and to be able to thank God uh, um, for the health of the breath. We are not, of course, immune from hospital cases, but more prayer that would get our brethren off sick beds spiritually, onto their feet, no doubt. But on the other hand, without assumption, we can see, and that is one's impression of leaving this land, that the dear brethren in this country uh, are, uh, that their health is good. We are not seeing that, dear brethren, in the to, uh, <laughs> to exalt us <laughs> one another because there's always plenty of room left <laughs> for a, a brighter and more vigorous constitution. <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, there is some measure through grace of, uh, of collective church health in the way of our prosperity. The pulse... Uh, uh, beats better, shall we say, and the lungs are in better service, Godward, in praise, and uh, among the saints in testimony, and in the open air may be, uh, uh, among men, and in the gospel in our rooms too, the word of God preached there, um, and God says, I'm going to protect all this. The enemy's in the rear like Amalek, he'll cut off the stragglers if he can. No, says Jehovah, as the cloud, uh, uh, when Pharaoh advanced against Israel, changed its position and uh, stood behind Israel protectively in their weakness. So Jehovah says, I'll see to the rear guard. You needn't trouble to look behind furtively. You go forward vigorously. Righteousness, glory, that's my matter, says God, the rear guard. Your matter is the vanguard. Go forward. Um, in the light. And as you answer to the light, your health will improve. We know that. We know that sunshine has a great effect on the health. Go in for the light divine. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. And dear brethren, a lot of your disease will go by the board. You'll have power to shake them off with a good constitution. Um, well, now thou shalt call, thou shalt cry, and he will say, Oh, how simple. 
Oh, how complicated is the deadness of the letter. How sweet and simple uh, the life of the spirit of things. Here I am. Here I am. That's what God is saying in our meetings, you know. Here I am. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Here I am. Isn't that touching? Oh, you say we're so few in our meetings. Here I am. If the conditions are such that God uh, cannot uh, morally be the God he is, keep away from them. He must answer to his own work. And we're souls are true to his own work, cost what it may. Here I am. And then if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke and so on, the putting forth of the finger and the unjust speech. We know it, don't we? Galatians, a lot of putting forth of the finger, you know. The idea of the old schoolmaster thought, you know. And Paul says you've grown out of all that. Biting and devouring one another. The legal demands, the putting forth of the finger. Eh, I'm more holy than you. Uh, um, and what have we got here? And the unjust speech, how they go together. And so on. Well, now God says, uh, uh, <clears throat> if you're free of these matters, you've got to see to that. I'll see to the other. Jehovah will guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and strengthen thy bones. Look at that, dear brethren. Guidance, satisfaction, strength, freshness. Thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a water spring whose waters the sea not. The here I am of the blessed God, his presence and all the benign results that flow <laughs> to a people who have God and have got him on moral grounds. Uh, in the lowly spirit of Jesus, uh, and in all the other features, uh, the hatefulness of religiousness and the flesh and demand, the liberating of the yoked, all these lovely features of Christ, drunk into from Christ, energized by the Spirit, attracting God in the sense of all the divine persons, of course. Here I am. And then at the rest, what is it going to be? Oh, you're going to beget a generation. How beautiful. Thou shalt raise up the foundations that have remained from generation to generation. And thou shalt be called repairer of the breaches, restorer of frequented paths. Well, how, how glorious all this is, dear brethren. God says, I'll give you a name. You haven't wanted a name. Name to live and not dead? No. Uh, you've gone on in loneliness and nothingness? Uh, heaven will give you a name. You wouldn't like to have a name to the pair cathedrals, wouldn't you? Would you? <laughs> but you would like uh, to be known in heaven as one who's always uh, ready with cement to repair breaches. 13, the first Corinthians. Uh, we ought all to be in the cement. Lord. In that way, dear brethren, uh, <laughs> you often find there's a breach in feelings among the brethren. What's wanted? Cement. Love. Uh, binding. Uh, not, uh, especially you're in this business, you know, of love. Like a plumber, there's a, a burst pipe. Uh, uh, he goes along without any show or dress, but he's got his tools, and he's got the skill to use them, and he does his work and he's gone. Precious service, hey, hey, for the saints today, <laughs> visiting, a repairer of breaches, restore our frequented path, keep divine principles forward, keep in whose hearts are the highways. Restorer of frequented paths. See that the traffic can circulate along the divine highway, shall I say, freely <laughs> in the maintenance of the solid material, so to speak, that forms, uh, that, that assures the saints' preservation. And then at the end, the two things, if you honor me, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> what will I do for your God, says? You'll do, I'll do two things, says. Uh, you'll delight in me, 
And, and I'll have you ride on the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, my father. Well, the high places of the earth, they're before us on the morrow. Not of the earth as millennially Israel will know them. Uh, but uh, these, these great heights, Habakkuk speaks of them. He, uh, he, the high places, he says. Oh, what elevation along this moral line into the very presence of God. In our Ephesian uh, uh, home, shall I say. And then you come back, you know. And you're fed with the heritage of Jacob. That is, with the knowledge of God in his house. Brings you back to First Timothy, you know, where uh, uh, Jacob learned the truth of having God with him and he being with God here on earth in his house. So that uh, love gives us a blank check, but on its own holy terms too. Uh, that uh, uh, as we start in the humility that becomes us and preserve it as we go, we rise to the heights of divine love for us.